Hi, English department team, particularly those of us who are teaching in 11th grade and have the SBAC looming over our students. I wanted to share with you three resources that I use to help the students prepare for the test. The first one, as you can see here, is a series of sample papers. In fact, there are sample papers for every possible score that students can get on the essay. So the students are graded in three categories, organization and purpose, evidence and elaboration, and grammar conventions. Uh, so there are two sets of prompts that this has examples for. One of them is about sunflowers uh, being used as biofuel and the economic impacts. And another one uh, is on the viability of 3D printers, either an explanatory essay or an argumentative essay. You can click, and so can students, on an example. As you can see, this is a bad example, obviously. It, didn't, it doesn't have more than one sentence. But you can take a look at examples that are significantly better. For example, this one um, that has a variety of quotes, citing sources. The students typically have to select two sources out of four. This high achieving essay selected all four sources and use them. I typically show the students that when you don't give examples, you're going to end up in the ones. When you give examples but don't cite them, you'll probably end up in the twos. If you have a citation for something that you've essentially paraphrased, it's probably going to be a three. But if you quote and cite the source, that'll bump you up to a four when it comes to how they're assessing the usage of evidence and whether or not you're elaborating enough. So this is one resource. Here I have another, which is for the sample multiple choice questions. And you can use this for any grade level, really, that takes the test. But uh, in fact, also math can use it. So it gives us the four areas of the standards that the students are going to be assessed on and measured on. Um, you can click on any one of them, click on what the targets are, and then it'll give you four, um, at, at least four um, examples. In this case, you've got several more. So you can click on any of them. And by the way, you have an answer key that the students can view. And again, this is accessible to the students like the practice essays because you don't need to log in to get in. They're public. So you can click on any one of them. And like any of the questions that they have examples for over here, if you click on the little um, three lines, you'll see it has a tutorial. So it has a tutorial on how to answer every type of question. And it gives some examples on how the students can do that so they can take a look at this. When they've got a podcast or when they're writing their own essays, they can also use the Notepad app and they can take notes as long as they make sure they save before on the test, of course, they save before they pause. The following presentation is from the and so they give them the um, the audio um, discourse that they have to re then respond to. And here are some of the types of questions that they'll have. Typically, they're asking the students to identify claim, to identify the evidence that's supporting the claim, to identify potentially the purpose or the conclusions of, um, of the evidence. Um, very similar to what we're teaching them when we're teaching the students about the PRECI. The third resource I wanted to show you, and I'll put links to all of these um, so that you can quickly go to them, is this one that's on the CASP website. So if we go over here to where it says student interface and practice, you'll see that the students can log in. You don't need to sign in for anything. All you have to do is hit sign in and the students will then get 99 different attempts to do a practice test and 99 different attempts to do a training test. Um, so lots of opportunities for the students to, um, to practice and for you to incorporate this in your classes if it's something that may be useful. Anyway, have a great spring break.